Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for uh, joining us today. My name is Moul Bestawi. I'm McMaster's Vice President for Research and International Affairs. And on behalf of our president, Dr. Patrick Dean, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the official opening of McMaster's Biointerfaces Institute, the first and only type of its kind in Canada. Right below us is a facility that has the capacity, the infrastructure, and the human capital to lead to the discovery of new services and new surfaces and new products. Discoveries that will now be made in hours, not the weeks and months that it used to take, thanks to the high throughput strategies utilized by the Institute to accelerate the discovery and understanding of biointerfaces. With us today are some key individuals who have made this initiative possible through their investments and their confidence in our researchers. It is indeed my distinct pleasure to call on the Member of Parliament for Ancaster, Dundas Flamborough Westdale, and an incredible supporter of everything McMaster. Since his election in 2006, David Sweet, has been a strong advocate of the McMaster community and our voice in the House of Commons. As chair of the Federal Government Industry Science and Technology Committee, he is keenly aware of how university research fits into the country's economic agenda. We are tremendously thankful for his support and most pleased he could join us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. David Sweet. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here. It's great to be here on behalf of uh, Minister Goodyear, who um, just 17 hours ago uh, was before our committee, Industry Science and Technology Committee, answering questions uh, regarding the main estimates, uh, 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 the uh, uh, procurement process uh, uh, of the House of Commons, and, um, and was, of course, answering questions on a broad spectrum of things. Uh, and that's what happens when you get opposition and government members in one room, but it's uh, all good and exciting stuff. Uh, it's, it's great to be here, um, and it's, uh, I think, as uh, Mo mentioned, my loyalty here to McMaster uh, is, first off, well-earned uh, and undying. But I, I thought this morning I'd just um, tell you uh, why I, I have an added reason of being very happy to be here at uh, this announcement. Uh, you know. I don't know about you, but I wasn't all that uh, compliant of a young student, and I got many lectures uh, saying to me, oh, yeah, absolutely, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, I got these lectures about, you know, there's no shortcuts, David. And of course, if they really wanted to be serious, it was always, there's no shortcuts, Mr. Sweet. Uh, and so I was delighted when I actually saw the press release on, on this one, and it says, Finding a Needle in a Haystack McMaster opens $22 million Biointerfaces Institute to create scientific shortcuts. So I, I, have, I have today a kind of maniacal joy hoping that someone that taught me sees that press release today and sees my face saying, you know, there are shortcuts no matter what you think. So, so uh, again, I, I'm glad to be here. Um, and and uh, again, Minister Goodyear sends his greetings. Our government recognizes the importance of biotechnology in ensuring the health and well-being of Canadians. That's why through the Canada Foundation for Innovation and the Nat, uh, Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, NSERC, of course, we've invested $8.8 .8 million in the Biointerfaces Institute. Our investments helped establish a state-of-the-art facility and set up a unique training program in the development of biointerfaces. And Fred, uh, by the way, great YouTube video. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm usually like the rocket man, the science I don't understand, but uh, at least Fred made it a little bit uh, able for a layman to grasp it by that YouTube video. The program allows students and the public and private sectors to collaborate using the facility as a testing lab and a vehicle to commercialize their discoveries. As a matter of fact, we're already seeing the benefits of these partnerships. For instance, Richmond's, Richmond Hill's Pro Lab Diagnostics is working with the Institute of creating for, to create the next generation of diagnostic technologies. These technologies will lead to cost-effective tests that provide rapid and accurate results for the detection of infectious diseases. It's a perfect example of how federal investments in science and technology can be leveraged for the benefit of all Canadians. 
Guided by our science and technology strategy, our government has invested more than $9 billion in advanced research, technology, and the growth of innovative companies since 2006. And today, more than ever, we know that Canada's long-term economic competitiveness depends on ideas and creativity. In fact, I would have to say that um, day in and day out, week in and week out, um, the number one conversation next to the general economy is innovation, commercialization, getting products to the marketplace faster, <coughs> collaboration between universities and the private sector, and as Mo and I have talked about, uh, you know, that gap between the research lab and the shop floor. And so this is just another area where we're trying to invest wisely and make sure that we become more competitive as a country. I should note that those are not empty commitments, rather to ensure that Canada remains a global research and innovation leader. Economic Action Plan 2013 provo proposes a number of new investments as well, $225 million to support advanced research infrastructure through the Canada Foundation for Innovation, an additional $37 million annually to strengthen partnerships between industry and researchers, and $15 million ongoing increase to NSERC's base budget to support academic industry research partnerships. Ladies and gentlemen, through investments in research infrastructure and institutions across the country, we're contributing to Canada's brain gain, and that is directly linked to a stronger, more innovative economy which provides important social benefits to all Canadians. On beca behalf of the Government of Canada, I wish to congratulate the Biointerfaces Institute, McMaster University, for the newest world-class facility. I wish you all the best in your research, and I am eager to hear more, even though I already heard a lot from the great YouTube. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you, David. Thank you for your comments, your investment, and your trust in our capabilities. Both federally and provincially, there is a shared knowledge of the power of university research and its ability to assist in transforming economies. David just spoke to it from a national point of view. And now I'd like to call on our guests from the province to share their thoughts on how university research contributes to helping grow Ontario's economy. It is my pleasure to welcome back to his alma mater, Minister of Community and Social Services, MPP for Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, Westdale, Mr. Ted McMeekin. Ted has been a great friend and supporter of McMaster's for decades, but particularly over the last decade as our MPP, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Ted McMeekin. Well, it's great to be home, I'll tell you. Uh, nothing uh, um, gets me cranked up the end, end of a week more than uh, coming to uh, my beloved McMaster and having a chance to, uh, to meet with friends. Um, Dr. Dean, uh, Dr. Mo, I, I, hope, I, hope you're, I hope you're not getting tired of David and I coming. Because <laughs> we, we never tire of it, do we, David? Anyhow, the province of Ontario is uh, uh, keenly aware of the role university research plays in our efforts to promote economic development and prosperity. Indeed, that's why Premier Wynne has reconfirmed our commitment to the Ministry of Research and Innovation, a ministry dedicated to capturing the value of research and to capitalize on the innovation that goes hand in hand with it. And there are few, if any, more qualified to lead this portfolio than my good friend and colleague, Dr. Riza Moridi. Prior to his entry into politics in 2007 as the MPP for Richmond Hill, uh, Minister Moridi had a 17-year career in the university and industrial sectors as a nuclear science person, as a matter of fact, which kind of fits, right? Uh, arming him with the knowledge and the experience to bridge academia and innovators with business and government. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our good friend, our colleague, one of us, the Honorable Riza Moridi. Riza. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I must bring this closer. Okay. 
And thank you very much, Ted, for that kind introduction. You know, Ted has been a great supporter and uh, dedicated advocate for McMaster University and the city of Hamilton, both at the Ontario legislature and also at the cabinet table. So thank you very much, Ted, for what you have done and what you have been doing for the city of uh, Hamilton and also for this wonderful institution, the university, McMaster University. I would also like to uh, acknowledge MP David Sweet um, and also thank our federal government for, for your collaboration, your government's collaboration, David, uh, with my Ministry of Research and Innovation in supporting research and innovation in Ontario research institutions such as McMaster University. I would like also to take a moment to thank a few people here with us this morning uh, who, are, who have been instrumental to McMaster's success. Uh, the first, of course, is Dr. Patrick Dean, the President and the Vice Chancellor of McMaster University, and Dr. John Burnham, uh, Canada Research Chair in Bioanalytical Chemistry and Biointerfaces, who will be leading this wonderful institute. Uh, I am delighted to hear that uh, ProLab uh, Diagnostics, a company from my hometown, Richmond Hill, uh, will be collaborating with this institute on new uh, diagnostic innovations. Finally, I would like to uh, recognize the students here at McMaster. You will be researching and developing the next wave of biocompatible materials at this extraordinary institute. It's my pleasure to join all of you today to celebrate the opening of this wonderful facility, <coughs> McMaster's Biointerfaces Institute, a leading research center for this type of research located here in this wonderful province of Ontario. As a scientist myself, I am fascinated by the research you are performing and the difference one day your research may make to the lives of Ontarians. And as a businessman, I am excited by the commercialization opportunities uh, this institute offers and the potential of, for new goods, good jobs right here in this province of Ontario. But as a Minister of Research and Innovation, what I am most of all is thankful. I am thankful for your commitment to this research. I am thankful for perseverance that made this institute a reality. And I am thankful for the work being done here to innovate the next generation of biointerfaces. Your work will strengthen the province's economy and improve our quality of life. The Biointerfaces Institute uh, will give uh, Dr. Bernan and his team the equipment and the space they need to conduct the world-class research that generates world-class results. And our government is proud to support this institute and to support the work you do every day. In fact, one of the first thing Premier when did, after taking office, as Minister McMeekin indicated earlier, was to re-establish the Ministry of Research and Innovation. She understands that uh, you can't get game-changing technologies, life-saving discoveries, or commercially successful innovations without putting in the work and doing research. The most prominent physicist of the 19th century, James Clark Maxwell, once noted, in every branch of knowledge, progress is proportional to the amount of facts on which to build, and therefore to the facility to obtain data. This new institute will help McMaster University collect the data it needs to understand the complex mechanisms of biointerfaces, and it will help the university build on that data and advance in the fields of sciences, engineering, and medicine, and the environmental sciences. And the key to the success of your work will be the institute's partnership with industry to ensure that this pioneering research will not remain on shelves, because Developing a new class of biosensors and diagnostics that can be commercialized and then taking from the lab to marketplace 
to community. This is how Ontarians and Canadians and one day people around the world will benefit from the research done right here in this university in this province. And it couldn't be happening at a more opportune moment. As the population ages, biocompatible medical devices and diagnostics will become more important than ever to sustaining a strong economy and to healthy society. That is the kind of progress the world needs more of. And we are so proud that this kind of research is happening right here in this university and in this province. With pioneering research centers like this one, this new Biointerfaces Institute, I am confident that the researchers in Ontario will continue to lead the way. Enjoy your celebration, and I wish you much success on the road ahead. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. Minister Boridi, Minister McMeekin, our sincere thanks to your government for investing in this opportunity that is guaranteed, we think, to enhance Ontario's innovative status. It is now my pleasure to call on McMaster's President and Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Dean. Patrick's priorities are focused on enhancing the student experience integrating community engagement into the work of the academy and ensuring the continuation of a wide range of high quality research. He's committed to putting our knowledge to work and ensuring everyone within our reach, physically or virtually, benefits from the work we do here. Ladies and gentlemen, President Patrick Dean. Well, good morning, everybody. I have to say these are my very favorite kinds of occasions, so it's a great pleasure to be here. And in answer to Ted's uh, self-effacing comment, you're always welcome here, Ted. It's a great, a great sign when Ted's here, David's here, and, and our new Minister of, uh, of Innovation and uh, Research, and Gilles, is here. It's a good sign because <laughs> something important is about to be announced, uh, as it is today. So thank you all for joining us very much. Uh, uh, Riza uh, and uh, the other, other uh, dignitaries. I also want to thank our industry partners for joining us here today. Uh, your support of this initiative and your confidence uh, in our researchers, uh, particularly in John and his colleagues uh, here at the Biointerfaces Institute, will undoubtedly uh, help to position this province uh, and Canada as a centre of excellence in biointerfaces research. Uh, Mo mentioned a few of our goals and priorities, and the Biointerfaces Institute is an excellent example of how we can achieve these. Uh, it is multidisciplinary in every sense, a collection of researchers bridging three faculties, science, engineering, and health sciences, and at least a half dozen departments. Uh, and because of that, it provides a very fertile ground for discovery, and for a collaborative training environment, uh, enabling graduate and undergraduate students to get a sense of the larger projects uh, that are possible in the field, affording them the opportunity to work in integrated teams, and ultimately uh, requiring them to communicate their research to colleagues outside of their field of specialization, an important uh, skill. So it's this kind of innovative learning combined with the opportunity to work alongside industry collaborators and world-class researchers that will give our students the edge to better prepare them for their futures and to make them ideal recruits as they continue on in their paths to, become, to becoming the next generation of leaders in our society. And while the Biointerfaces Institute is a state-of-the-art center for research and, discover, uh, and discovery, it's so much more uh, than the infrastructure itself. Much of the Institute's success will be rooted in the researchers themselves and the dedicated professional staff of research scientists and technicians, many of whom are with us here today, who will not only manage the instrumentation, uh, but will also aid in the design and in the interpretation of experiments. So collectively, these are the people who will train our students, conduct experiments in collaboration with our industry partners, 
and, as we hope will be the outcome of this whole process, discover new materials and technologies that will improve the health and well-being of societies near and far. So I'd like to extend my personal congratulations to all those involved, uh, in particular uh, to the Institute's director, John Brennan, uh, Canada Research Chair in Bioanalytical Chemistry and Biointerfaces. The momentum that he's built so far will only continue to accelerate, uh, I know, and of course the promise of this Institute, as we all know, gathered here today, is enormous. Uh, it's now my pleasure to call on Dr. Gilles Patry, a uh, world-class researcher in his own right, a respected entrepreneur, and the President and CEO of the Canada Foundation for Innovation. While he's a former President and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Ottawa, he does have McMaster roots, I'm pleased to say having spent a decade here as a Professor of Civil Engineering. We're really pleased he was able to return to McMaster today to help us celebrate in this opening. Please, Gilles. Good morning, <clears throat> Minister Moridi, Mr. Sweet, Mr. McMeekin, President Dean, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Permettez-moi de vous dire à quel point je suis heureux d'être parmi vous ce matin pour célébrer l'ouverture avec vous de ce nouveau pavillon de recherche tout à fait extraordinaire. I'm truly delighted to be here this morning to celebrate with you the opening of the Biointerfaces Institute. And as Patrick mentioned, I'm also delighted to be here because McMaster was my home for 10 years, and it's wonderful to see so many new, uh, not new faces, but older faces uh, <laughs> in the room. Uh, I've had some terrific time at McMaster, terrific memories, and we were able to talk about that last night at dinner, and uh, it's always nice to come back to, to McMaster. You know, that the academic, public, and private sectors have pulled together to support this investment in innovative biomedical engineering research is a testament to the dedication and leadership here at McMaster University. The CFI, with funding from the Government of Canada, is proud to be among these partners. From a societal perspective, the potential benefits of the solutions that will come from out of this facility are substantial. Researchers from a wide range of areas will use state-of-the-art facilities in collaboration with their industry partners to gain a deeper understanding of how materials interact, which will ultimately benefit health and the well-being of Canadians. McMaster has a proud history of research, discovery, and innovation. Harry Thode's nuclear power research in the early 1940s, for example, led McMaster to the reactor coming to life in 1959. That work was, built, uh, was later built on by Nobel laureate Bertram Brockhaus. More recently, researchers here constructed the ancient Black Plague genome. And your achievements have been outstanding. And the Biointerfaces Institute will undoubtedly follow this tradition. At the Canada Foundation for Innovation, we believe that research builds communities. Every time research leads us to advances that improve people's lives, it is helping build a more vibrant community. And when research leads to new discoveries and innovations, as it is, as it does here at McMaster and at the Biointerfaces Institute, it is helping fuel the industries of tomorrow, industries that will create jobs for the next generation of Canadians. Vous savez, depuis sa création le par le gouvernement du Canada en 1997, la FCI a laissé une empreinte durable sur les établissements à la grandeur du pays. Et aujourd'hui, nous pouvons dire avec fierté que nos investissements contribuent à l'avancement des connaissances et à l'amélioration de la qualité de la recherche au Canada. Ever since its creation in 1997, the CFI has transformed, really, the research landscape across Canada and in Ontario. In fact, I had the pleasure of meeting with Premier Wynne last week, and I told her that the CFI has invested so far $2.4 billion in Ontario infrastructure, and thanked her also for the investment that the Government of Ontario made in matching virtually every project that we have supported uh, in, Can in Ontario universities and colleges.
L'appui de la FCI permet aux établissements de mettre en valeur leurs ressources la plus importante, des chercheurs talentueux qui développent de nouvelles idées et qui représentent l'avantage humain du Canada. You know, at the end, it's all about people. It's about researchers, it's about staff, it's about students working to advance science. Um, it's about the CFI providing those people the tools they need to conduct world-class research. Let me acknowledge our partners in this. Obviously, the province of Ontario, but also the private sector contributions. Uh, the contributions that have come from Brooker, uh, Simeon, Phi, TCAN, and Air Liquide. Without them, the CFI investments would never uh, see the light of day. And also, one important partner that all, you know, sometimes is neglected by in events like this, the institution itself, McMaster. Because I know very well, when we do celebrate an opening like this, it's true that there are millions of dollars coming from the federal government, millions of dollars coming from the province, lots of dollars coming from the private sector, but there are also lots of dollars coming from the institutions. Uh, and I want to thank uh, McMaster for contributing uh, so, uh, in such a way to supporting the research infrastructure project that CFI has put on this campus, and we have, uh, we have invested quite a bit. In closing, I'd like to thank again McMaster for its con continued commitment to uh, research excellence. I'd like to congratulate Dr. John Brennan and his team. Uh, and today, more than ever, society looks to researchers like you for solutions to our challenges. The critical work that you've already done and the innovative work that has yet to come out from this institute will contribute to these solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jill. CFI has truly transformed the way we conduct our research. It's been a game changer, really allowing us to build the necessary infrastructure to ensure Canadian researchers are capable to compete on the global scale. We are grateful for your investment. At last, but definitely not least, it is certainly my pleasure to introduce the brains of the operation, so to speak, Dr. Jean Brennan, Canada Research Chair in Bioanalytical Chemistry and Biointerfaces. Regarded as a world leader in his discipline, John recognized the value of this kind of facility, a one-stop biointerface shop where industry and academic researchers have both the equipment and the data right at their fingertips. I'll let him tell you more about it before I create a bigger mess. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the director of McMaster's Biointerfaces Institute, Dr. Jean Brun. So uh, I, I've been hearing my name a lot this morning, and I, I think it's really important to point out that I'm just one of a, a large team of people, uh, academics, uh, a, an incredible uh, number of staff members, a bunch of amazing graduate students and postdocs in my own group, and a whole bunch across the number, the 10 PIs in their groups as well. It really is the people that drive this, and it's the infrastructure that enables these people to drive the research forward. So I really want to take a moment to say thanks to all of you who've made, you know, the fact that I'm standing here possible, because without you, I wouldn't be here. So what is it we're, we're trying to do here? Basically, way back you know, 20 years ago or so, or maybe before that, in the pharmaceutical industry, the concept of high throughput synthesis of small molecules and screening of these to find the needle in the haystack, to find new drugs, was really developed. And as part of this, this concept of combinatorial chemistry, so making lots of small molecules, and very fast screening sort of came to light and fortunately for us, one of the people who was involved in this was Fred Capretta, who spent one of his sabbatical years at Roche in Basel, Switzerland, and learned all the tricks of the trade and how you do these high throughput syntheses and high throughput assays. I, of course, am not a, a drug discovery guy. I'm a materials guy and an analytical chemist. But as it turns out, when we sat down, as we often do over a uh, cold beverage, 
And we said, why is nobody taking this approach and applying it outside of the drug discovery field and towards things like biointerfaces, biomaterials, et cetera? And once we sort of had this sort of the, the germ of the idea, what we then did was we said, well, who are the best people on campus to go out and recruit and to try to build this initiative with? And so we identified another eight very, very senior, excellent uh, faculty members, some of whom, like John Brash, are pioneers in the field who 40 years ago were developing the first biocompatible surfaces and developing those further. So we have a, a number of other people, Heather Sheardown, who runs the 2020 Strategic Research Network, and Bob Pelton, who runs a Sentinel Research Network. And I, I could go and name them all, but at this, we'll run out of time and the ribbon won't get cut. So, <laughs> and, and just uh, one kind of shout out, the, this entire event has been a huge undertaking for my staff, and in particular two people, Kathy Bottas and Leanne Brown, who have done a huge, huge amount of work to make all of this possible, and they also more or less keep me sane. <laughs> I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> so, the Biointerfaces Institute, it's Canada's first and only facility that uses the tools of high throughput synthesis and screening to develop new surfaces, new materials, and essentially, at the end of the day, new devices that we can use for better testing in the environment, for healthcare, et cetera. So the way we do this is we use high-speed robotics and we use very fancy, what we call high-throughput analysis methods, and we integrate these together. So what this allows us to do is, in the span of a few days, we can test tens of thousands of materials. In a month, millions of materials. And as was mentioned before, it's the needle in the haystack. So the first goal is to find something interesting in the haystack, but that's not enough. What we'll end up doing if we test a million materials is finding thousands that are interesting. Then how do we discover why were these ones the ones that did the business? Why do these ones work and these ones not? So we have all this secondary infrastructure to characterize, to understand what's going on and to drive fundamental science that feeds back into the applied science. So these two things have to go hand in hand. So the kinds of things that we're going to be doing is looking at new surfaces for diagnostic applications. When you put a protein on a surface, it's usually not a very happy camper. So we've got to develop ways to make the surface be more biological-like and keep the proteins happy. Good examples of these, the pregnancy test kit, the glucose sensor that a lot of people use at home. These are examples of proteins on surfaces that are used for diagnostics. We want to take this to the next level and make diagnostics on demand for any kind of analyte you might want. We want to look at things like surfaces that resist fouling. How do we prevent biofilm formation on doorknobs in hospitals? How do we end up going out and finding materials that will give us more comfortable contact lenses? So Heather Sheardown in the 2020 network does work in that area. How do we find things that we can implant in the body that might do drug release and yet not cause some kind of unwanted side effects? These are all kinds of questions that we're trying to answer. And as a result of having some very good partners, ProLab Diagnostics in the diagnostics area, as you might guess, um, but as well as a lot of the instrument vendors, Broker and TCAN and Phi and uh, Sineon, Air Liquide. So all of these guys have been instrumental in helping us put the pieces together so that we can develop something that doesn't exist otherwise. So what we've really managed to do, I think, is get a good start. And this really is just the beginning. What we've managed to do so far as a team is generate something on the order of $3 million per year in research funding as a direct result of the investment from the Ministry of Research and Innovation and the Canada Foundation for Innovation. And this is now the money that pays for the students to come in and to use the equipment and to dream up new things that they'd like to do and to be able to try it. So we're hoping that this is the tip of the iceberg and that as we go forward, we're going to be growing and ultimately getting a much bigger and, I think, more diversified team. So uh, I think at the end of the day, the benefits to Canada, the benefits to Ontario are going to be many-fold. We're going to be training the next generation of highly qualified scientists and engineers. They're going to be going out into industry, taking some of the new tricks of the trade they learn here and applying them out in the real world. We're going to be looking at diagnostic sensors for environmental case, for environmental issues, safer water, safer food, et cetera. We're going to be looking at clinical diagnostics. 
So there's a whole range of different things we can think about. Already we have projects that we're looking to do point of care testing for C. difficile, for uh, respiratory infections, and the list basically can go on and on. So I think it's, it's like I said, just the beginning. What we're aiming to be is the national hub and ultimately part of an international network that is going to be the place where we do biointerfaces research. And we want McMaster to be the place in Canada that everyone says, that's where you got to go to do this. So finally, I, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Sweet, Mr. McMeekin, Minister Maridi, Jill Petri, and President Dean, and everyone else who has shown up today for our celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, and congratulations on, on seeing your vision <coughs> excuse me, through to completion. Thank you to all our partners, government and industry alike. Rest assured, your investment is well placed and will pay dividends, hopefully for years to come. Now we're about to move back to the four, fourth floor to officially open the Biointerfaces Institute and to tour the facilities we've heard so much about. Thank you all very much.